My name is Alicia Penamonti, and I'm a farmer from the state of New Hampshire, and I'm currently serving on the board of directors for National Pork Board. Uh, this morning, we, we're really lucky to have three other farmers joining me to share their stories um, about how they're able to talk about their farms uh, using social media. Social media has really changed our ability to share our stories um, without necessarily half, half having to physically open our barn doors to folks. Currently, there's almost 2 billion users of Facebook, um, in, and that's about 22% of the world's population is using Facebook. Um, other platforms that folks are using include Instagram with about 600 million users, um, and 90% of those Instagram users are, are millennials, so folks under the age of 35. Um, Twitter is another one a lot of us are using with about 317 million users there. Snapchat's one we're going to talk about today too, which is really um, the, new, the new big kind of up and coming social media platform. Um, and there's 9,000 snaps sent every second, um, so 9,000 per second. Um, and over 70% of adults are now using at least one social media site. Um, so to totally ignore social media is, is kind of almost dangerous for us. It's, it exposes us to millions and billions of people um, and gives us a great opportunity to share our farm story. So as I said, today we're going to have three farmers um, sharing with us as to how they use social media. Our first speaker is Brad Greenway, and Brad's a pig farmer from Mitchell, South Dakota, and he's the recipient of the 2016 America's Pig Farmer of the Year Award. That award is designed to recognize a pig farmer who excels at raising pigs using the We Care Ethical Principles and connects with today's consumers about how pork is produced. Greenway has focused on doing what's right for people, pigs, and the planet on his family farm for the last 40 years. He and his wife, Peggy, own two wean-to-finish pig barns. They also raise beef cattle and grow corn, soybeans, wheat, and alfalfa. Brad? Well, well thank you, Alicia, and, and thank you, everybody, for showing up this morning. And I'm not sure how they started this out because of the social media, and I think it's the one with the most gray hair gets to begin, and it's going to be the, the good, better, best. And so I think it'll get better and, and people that are more equipped than what I am as we go through the presentation. So thank you again for showing up and, and being here this morning. Thanks, Alicia, for the introduction. And, and uh, she talked a little bit about our farm, and honestly, it always comes back to that. I think farmers have great stories, and so whenever I do a presentation, whenever I talk to a group, you know, I start out on a farm. You know, they, they, people truly are interested in what, what happens there. She mentioned Peggy and I are on our farm. We've got, we've got one full-time employee. Uh, we have two children, and growing up, I mean, our two children were a big part, just like so many family farms. They absolutely were the ones that were helping do the chores and taking care and working the pigs and doing that stuff. We called it quality family time when they were growing up. I don't necessarily think they appreciated that term, but you know what? As they've grown now and we've got the kids and the grandkids and their spouses, they look back and they truly love what they learned on the farm. Um, she mentioned we're two wean to finish barns. I, I think the thing that's maybe a little bit unique is literally 10 years ago we were still Farrow to finish on our own. Uh, we had most of our pigs were in dirt lots, you know, housed how we could. And we're from South Dakota, so the weather extremes. And so literally 10 years ago is when we decided we want to make a, a, a change. My wife is from the Twin Cities, so she wasn't a farm girl. I've been on the farm all my life. My dad is 84. He's still on the family farm. Grandpa and Grandma come over from England. And so uh, we've got a lot of relationship back and, and how long we've been on our farm. But we decided 10 years ago to change it. We built our first wean to finish barn at the same time. We were looking for a pig source. There was other young people that wanted to expand. expand. And we built a sow barn, 14 of us, and it's actually on our dad's land. And so right now, I'm not every day in, the, in raising the baby pigs, but it's just up the road three-fourths of a mile, and I was baling hay around it yesterday morning. We also have corn, soybeans, cattle herd, um, and it's kind of neat when I get my the chance of going out and, and doing the America's Pig Farmer and talking about how I can and take the manure from my pigs to fertilize just about all my corn ground. The corn goes back through the pigs, and so it's kind of a neat story. So we're a diversified farm, like so many are today. We're probably a little more diversified when you throw in the cattle herd, but in South Dakota we got ground that's not tillable, and so it's a perfect spot to graze cattle. So we're very diversified. 
America's Pig Farmer of the Year. I'll tell you what, I am truly honored to be able to go out and visit with, with, with groups, sit on panels, and try to represent everybody that's in the room and everybody that's here these next three days. Um, I've, I've been honored. There's so many people that are doing things in the, in the pork industry, and I'm just glad to be part of it. Um, what that does, honestly, in just a sense, the application process is going on right now for next year's Pig Farmer of the Year. So down the line, so many people are doing some good things. We're just not used to going out and talking about it. I encourage you, anybody that's interested, to. it's been an awesome experience so far. And it puts you in places that farmers generally don't go. Sitting on sustainability panels, uh, going to future food tech conferences, um, going to meat conferences, letting people ask those questions. And that's what the role of Pig Farmer of America has been. And it's been a great experience, and I'm truly honor honored to represent our industry. How did I get started in doing this? And, and honestly, I go back to when they asked what, how did you decide you wanted to get up in front of a group. In 2005, I took Operation Main Street. Anybody in here, or how many people have heard of Operation Main Street? We got a few, that, a, a number of them. It was the best thing, honestly, that I think I've ever done as far as a pork board program. And there's so many of them out there that are awesome. But Operation Main Street basically gives farmers a little bit of training and some confidence to go out and talk to a group. We're all busy, but if we can all do a little bit, it's going to go a long ways. And so when I took the Operation Main Street in, in 05, started speaking to some groups around the Mitchell, South Dakota area, and then you go to Rapid City, and then you start doing some regional stuff. Every time, and it wasn't a matter of if I was in my hometown that's very rural and very agriculture, they've got questions about how we farm today. And so we have to get that message out. So continue to expand from township board meetings to, to zoning boards to to dietitians, to nursing groups, to wherever they wanted somebody to come in and talk to them, because obviously I like to talk, and uh, they, they put you in those venues and take care of the hard work for you. So it's been an awesome program, and that's probably where it all started, you know, of me getting out and trying to advocate. So if anybody's interested, make sure you contact National Pork Board. It's a great program, and they're giving trainings all the time for people that are interested. So into the social media part, that's what you always all come from, or, or come for, I should say. I gotta give a ton of credit to my wife. Honestly, she was on Facebook. You know, I supposedly didn't have time. And I think it was about two years ago on my birthday, she says, she was saying, okay, wish everybody a happy birthday. And she says, why in the heck don't you get your own account? Why are you doing it through mine? And so I did. So I got on Facebook, I guess, a couple years ago. It's a way of connecting with friends and, and, and getting message out. The, the, the thing that's happened, I always say that's not a very good picture, but usually cameras don't lie, so you get what you, you got right here. But anyway, that's us in the barn. So Facebook is probably the one that I use the most, and also with uh, the encouragement of Claire, when I got the Pig Farm of America role, they set up an account, a Twitter account, and so we're doing some tweeting that way through that. The other thing is, and so there's our two, if you want to say handles, but Peggy, my wife, she's the one, and again, coming from the cities, I think we talked about that the other day, we did an interview, how did this all start? And I think it was her coming from the Twin Cities, having friends there, and when she started posting a picture or two about our farm or what was happening, people were all asking questions. And so started going that way, and I think that's probably how we got involved. Right now is uh, Facebook Live. You know, with a pig farmer a year, again, player, we need to do some Facebook Live. So we always talk about how can we bring people into our farm or get our farm, what happens, the good stuff we're doing every day, out to people. And that's how we can do it. Facebook Live, you're in the barn and you can't believe the number of questions that as you're going about it, that people are, are interested and they're firing questions off to you. So between Facebook and Twitter, the two things, just some tips and some very easy things. They love to see pictures and video. And it seems like kids and pigs. You know, we've done some, we did a little one for Earth Day. You know, and I was out in the field and talking about how we do manure. That doesn't get as much views, and maybe I was just boring that day, but, but, but pigs really... People, it, it draws them to it. That's just my personal opinion. And some kids. We've got a granddaughter, so if you've got kids in there or a little granddaughter walking through, um, that's what it does. You know, it really draws people to it. Add some humor and a little bit of personality to it. And sometimes I struggle on that. I've got to lighten up once in a while. And so anyway, but, but add some humor to it. People want to know that you're excited about what you're doing every day. And so, uh, and the other thing is, is be conversational. So as those questions, when you're doing a Facebook Live, as the question's coming up on the screen, and sometimes you've got to make sure you've got good internet. We run into that in South Dakota. But as the questions come up, you know, take those questions, and, and boom, all of a sudden another one will come. If they see that you're willing to answer questions and be conversational, more stuff will pop up. The other thing is, is to get started, just a quick here, don't be afraid, in my case, to ask my kids. We call them tech support. 
okay, can you help me do another presentation or help do this? How do I get this on Facebook? And, and things like that. And so when you get, you know, as I'm older, don't be afraid to ask for help. You've got support, whether it's a support board or somebody, but ask that next generation that's more, you know, better than what I is. And so don't be afraid to ask for help. Post often. And sometimes you think, yesterday, for instance, I was bailing hay. I don't know if it, but people are truly interested. The little things that we think are normal and nobody's interested, people are. And especially when you get out to bigger consumer audiences, they really want to know what's going on. And so the little things that you think are just the norm, post it out there. I mean, because people are truly interested. And you might have some dialogue. And that's the neat thing, I think, on, on both Twitter, not so much on Facebook. Some, you'll put a picture out and there'll be a comment. But on Twitter, you can get a conversation. Again, I bring Peggy back up, and I've had some. You know, you get some dietitians and some of those, if you want to say higher influence people, they're reading your stuff and they've got a question. You can have a conversation back and forth. And so make sure you answer those questions. If they reach out to you, make sure you respond to it. So with that, I'm going to turn over, and I'm going to be looking forward to, to questions later on. Thank you, Brad. Our next speaker is Logan Thornton. Logan is a pig farmer from Kuna, Idaho, and he is one of the 2017 Pig Farmers of Tomorrow. This award is designed to recognize pig farmers between the ages of 18 and 29 that follow the We Care ethical principles as well as their life commitment to pig farming. Thornton graduated with a degree in animal science from Brigham Young University in Idaho. He now lives on his family farm, the Flying Pig Farm, with his wife, Melissa, and their three kids. Logan? There. Okay. <laughs> uh, being out there in Idaho, there's not a lot of other pig farmers around us. I love coming here uh, to World Pork Expo to get with other pig farmers and uh, kind of see what everyone else is doing because we're a little more isolated there. So like I said, we're the Flying Pig Farm. Uh, we're established by my dad in 1983, and he's here today, uh, which is glad. He grew up on a crop farm and decided he wanted to raise some pigs, so he started our farm on his own. So I'm a second-generation pig farmer and hoping to take that and uh, carry it on. Uh, so we live right in Cuna, Idaho, uh, with my kids, which are all here, and uh, it's real exciting to have all of us here. 250 sow farrow to finish farm uh, that we have, mostly Berkshire uh, commercial pigs. We sell Berkshire pigs, crossbred pigs, show pigs. Uh, we also sell feed, breeding stock, and we also sell semen. We have a few boars, boars as well. So you can see in the background of that picture, uh, we use finishers for our, or hoop barns for our finishing and also our gestation. Um, our farrowing and nursery is kind of your standard a modern facility. Uh, so I'm, like they said, I'm part of the pig farmers of tomorrow. Um, I'm almost 30, so I almost am unqualified uh, to be part of that. So uh, luckily I squoze in there right at the end. So it's been a great honor to be with Maddie and Kyle as part of this. To kind of, I, I, was, I was struggling on social media and different things. How do I share? How do I get myself out there? And I was actually scrolling through Twitter one day and saw apply for pig farmers of tomorrow. And I was Perfect. So I went after that, and I'm really excited to do that, and it's led me to be here today. Uh, my daughter always says, when I say I'm a pig farmer tomorrow, she's three, and she'll say, no, you're a pig farmer today, Dad. And so, but, so she doesn't agree with the title, but that's all right. Um, so back to social media, and we use it a lot on our farm. We have a Flying Pig Farm Facebook page, and it's a great way to promote your business. And with the show pig industry, you'll see every farm, every show pig farm has a Facebook page. And with that, it's able to promote your business, reach out to customers, and show people what you do. Um, it starts conversations. Show pig people are really good at taking care of their pigs, making sure their needs are met, and it's a great way to show that. Uh, one thing that we need to always realize when posting the social media, you're not always just posting to people who like your page or who are your friends. That those pictures, those videos, everything can get anywhere. So we need to uh, be aware of that when we're posting. So kind of some what not to share, what to share. Um, I've seen some pictures, mostly uh, through some of the show pig deal, where we just need to be aware of what we're posting. Whether we're, uh, it's a common practice sometimes to snare a pig to clip it, and I've seen pictures of that, where really we're not harming the pig, we're just trying to get it to hold still so we can clip its hair down. Uh, but to the outside world, that can look pretty 
horrendous in some ways. And when you say stuff like shaving or clipping, they don't always know what you mean. Are you clipping its ears, cutting its tail, or no, you're just cutting its hair. But we need to be aware of some of those things. Um, the things to show, like I said before, uh, show pig people and people raising pigs for shows are great at taking individual specialized care of their pigs. Those are the things we need to see. Show the kids uh, walking their pigs, getting them ready for the shows, because they do such a good job of taking care of those pigs and making sure their needs are met. Um, so I have ventured up into most of the major social media platforms. Um, I'm still kind of a beginner trying to get out there. Uh, but Facebook, um, we're on there. Snapchat, I've been doing some of that with the uh, real pig farming and also uh, some of our own stuff. Twitter, um, some of the tips I have for like Twitter and things are to know your audience, um, know who might see your post and be ready to answer questions accordingly. Um, engage with others. I think sometimes in the ag industry we get a little focused on our own story and our own agenda. We need to be aware of others and engage with them and um, meet them at their level and then maybe they'll come over and engage with you on what you're doing. I think that's really important that if other people are interested in other things that we need to be interested in them if we expect them to be interested in what we're doing so then we can establish that and share our story that way. Um, so kind of advice on getting started, find what makes you and your farm unique. Um, I'm not always the funniest or most gregarious like Brad was talking about, but um, we need to find what makes us passionate. One thing I do on my farm, just because it's small enough, every batch of feed I mix on our farm, every pig I process, um, every sow, I breed those sows. Um, so that's something that makes it unique that I'm able to do working on the farm every day, except for now that I'm gone this week, my dad actually mixed a few batches of feed for the first time in four years or so. But other than that, I'm doing everything, but it was good for him to do that. So, um, and then make, find your passion, and then take time to show the farm. Um, I know my dad will relate to this, but every time I say, we're about to load pigs, I'll be like, hold on a second. I need to do a video post trying to explain what we're doing. And it may hold up the farm for a couple minutes, but we need to show those things and explain what we're doing. Uh, when we're uh, doing those things that are interesting, like Brad said, that may seem normal to us, but are interesting to other people and help them understand what we do as real pig farmers. So, and that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Logan. Our final speaker is Erin Brenneman. Erin is a pig farmer from Washington County, Iowa. She helps manage Brenneman Pork Incorporated, a fully integrated, family-run swine and grain operation. Brenneman has been an active voice for the pork industry on social media. She has given presentations across the country on how to effectively communicate the story of raising safe, affordable, healthful, and abundant pork. Brenneman is married to Tim, and they have two sons. Erin? Thank you. Thank you all so much for having me here today. As she said, I am from Washington County, Iowa, so I didn't come very far, not from Idaho or anything like that, but pretty pig friendly in Washington County. Um, Pharaoh to finish, about 29,000 sows, so we get pretty busy. Um, my specialty is with the baby pigs, that day one care, and we'll have eight to 900 pigs born on any one of our um, four farms every day, so I have a job, job security. Um, we'll mark about 750,000, a little bit more than 750,000 pigs um, every year, and we pride ourselves on being a family farm. I know everybody kind of takes that family farm thing and think, well, outside they think, oh yeah, right, you know, but we have 10 family members working on the farm every day, which is probably a reason why we have to be so big and spread out, right, to make that work. <laughs> so um, it's not the main reason, but it helps. Um, I've been a part of the Real Pig Farming Social Forces, which has been really cool. I have met, and to me it's one of the most important things, the best, some of the best friends of my life um, through Real Pig Farming. The lady sitting in the front um, and a, a, a bunch of others. And, and I think that's one of the most important pieces of this social media puzzle 
is don't do it alone. Network with friends. Talk about stuff other than pigs with them. <laughs> Sometimes we get wrapped up in our little pig bubble, and it, we need to break away in order to keep our sanity um, and, and do a better job. It's all about perspective, too. You know, learn other ways. Go different places. See other things. You know, it is important to talk about your farm, but get perspective about, about your audience and about the people that you're speaking with. Um, and like I said, emphasize different ways to, to achieve those social media goals. I mean, we talk about all the different platforms today. Pick one. You know, it is time consuming to, to do all of them. It is, but it's fun if you, <laughs> you like to do it. If you lay in bed and edit pictures at night when your husband actually just wants to talk to you. And, but, <laughs> you know, but um, it, it's a lot of fun. And you do meet some incredible people through the social media journey. It's, it, it's been amazing. I can't, I can't even stress it. And I'll talk a little bit. I, wanna, I, 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 I forgot to preface myself by saying that I, I don't know if you guys know me. I'm not from a farm. I was born and raised in the suburbs of Chicago. And yes, I saw you walk in with your t-shirt on. I love the Cubs, all right? And, you know, and find other outlets. And I'm going to talk about that later. But find other outlets. Don't talk to farmers. Farmers, no. Go find something else that you have in common with somebody else other than farming. And talk about that. And then, by the way, I talk about, like, sprinkle it. By the way, I'm a farmer, you know, or maybe it comes up in conversation. Don't even mention it. It'll come up, trust me. So, bread and pork on social media. Um, so, we're a bigger farm, right? Um, and we have a Facebook page. The Twitter, Snapchat, and Instagram is all more me, personally, just talking about the farm. But um, we like to be, I like to be present in all of those platforms because all those platforms provide a different type of information. You know, Facebook's very um, conversational, if you will. You know, you don't have a limit into how many characters you can have. You can write an essay. Oh, thanks, Claire. <laughs> you can write an essay if you want to. I don't recommend it. Keep it short. People's attention spans are pretty short, right? You don't want very long posts. but. Um, Twitter, 140 characters, right? I like to talk, if you couldn't tell. It's very hard for me to summarize what I want to say in 140 characters. Um, Snapchat is my baby. I love Snapchat. It is a wonderful platform for sharing a farm story because the, one of the most frequently asked questions I get is, what is a day in a life like? You know, it's like, you know, does any, do any of you have a typical day? Uh, you know, like a routine, what you do? I mean, yeah, it's just a certain point, but there's all sorts of wrenches that get thrown into that, <laughs> that schedule. I know that. So Snapchat is really quick and easy and fast, and you woke up. I get my kids out of the door in the morning. You know, you can't show that on Facebook. Nobody wants to see the 100, the, it, are any of you It Works people? You guys know the It Works people, like the 100 posts a day. Um, so it's very easy to show every aspect of your life, not just the farm. And the farm's important too, but it's 10 seconds because that's all people want. It's 10 seconds. They don't want very long. Um, and Instagram, very pretty, very fluffy, very friendly. Take good pictures. And you've got wonderful pictures on the farm and wonderful opportunities to share stuff on Instagram. And it's very non-informational. Just show me a pretty picture. And... Um, you know, we had a blogger tour out a couple of years ago now, and those bloggers, I wasn't on really on Instagram at the time, and those girls are like, they were nationally known bloggers, and they're like, get on Instagram. They didn't care where you were. They, that was where their conversation was. And obviously food is a pretty big conversation with what we do. Um, so, like I said, I went over this. I go off on tangents. I'm sorry. I shouldn't do that. I get ahead of myself. But... Um, Raw and real. Snapchat is, you know, well, there's filters and they're kind of fun. But, you know, it's no filter. It's 10 seconds of me walking down the hallway with my pigs or me trying to kick my kids out of the door in the morning. We all have that struggle, right? And then, you know, when you get down with the farm, you have baseball practice and you have to get dinner and you have to get them in the shower. I mean, it's all of that. And it's kind of neat to watch, for people to watch the course of your day. They realize that you're not just a farmer. You're 
a mom, you're a, a, a limo driver, you're a, you know, you get dinner on the table, you're, you're doing all sorts of different stuff, and it gets to show people's personalities as well. And I'm sorry, I got ahead of myself, but like I said, friendly audience for Instagram, non I did pretty good at getting ahead on that slide. Non-informative posts, pretty pictures, and there's plenty of opportunities. So the biggest thing everybody's always worried about, you get on there and there's internet trolls. Yes. There are. They're there. Um, there. I don't think there's as many of them as they lead everybody to believe, but but they're there in their mom's basements, you know, eating pizza, and that's what they're doing, and that's their job. But my, okay, so everybody's got their own different mantra, how to deal with the trolls. Some people will sit there and banter back and forth with them all day long, and they will. They'll banter all day long with you because... They're in their mom's basements eating pizza. But I don't. I've got other things to do. So basically, if you can't be respectful and approach me respectfully, you're not deserving of my time. It's a beautiful feature on every social media platform, and that's the block button. Block them and move on with your life. Um, do not be afraid to do that. Um, you block them. You tell all your friends. I, I like to call it a block party. So we, our friends, our friends will like, hey, you know, at so and so, being a real big pain, you know, and then we're like, oh, okay, and you can go, I'll go ahead and block him before he gets to you. <laughs> so, anyways, don't worry. And, and, and I guess the way to look at this is, if you don't have somebody trolling you, you're probably not getting your message out far enough. So, in a way, it is a good thing that you have internet trolls. As sad as that is. So I'd like to talk a little bit, too, about social media in the production company setting because, you know, we have to portray uh, Brenneman Pork as well, not just myself. Um, and so, and my biggest thing on that is I just want to be a resource. I don't want to teach anybody anything. Nobody wants to think about it. Do you want to be educated? Let me educate you on something. Do you want to be educated? No. You don't, nobody wants to be educated. But do you want a good resource if you have a question about something? Absolutely. Just plant yourself as a resource. Just show. And like I said, if you go and look at Brenham and Pork, it's very light. It's. I try to. I mean, I have a good time with it. And one of my, I, I had the pleasure once of um, numbering all the uh, feeders in the G barn, like a thousand and sixty of them. Like my right arm got tired. So every fifty or so feeders. I uh, wrote a quote, and one of my favorite quotes is, work hard, have fun, make a difference. Have a good time with it. And that's what I do. I, things that I see, it's very light on bread and pork because I just want to be there if you have a question. I don't want to be shoving information down your throat. Um, it's, so I like to keep it short. Like I said, don't try to educate. This is, I mean, I... <laughs> found, this is a tw Twitter one, but these pigs were, literally, they were all lined up like that smallest to largest in the pen. It was a sort pen. It wasn't, you know, so I was like, uh, I think we could all agree that this pig barn is racking some good signal strength. I, it does not teaching you anything. It's showing a picture of inside a barn. That's cool, but I'm just becoming a resource. Then maybe somebody could say, hey, you know, what are you feeding those pigs or something? I don't know. So turn it over to you. Okay. Thank you, Erin, and thank, thank you, you to all of our speakers.